My faith commands me to be fearless and not to bow to tyrants. Many finally see the ideological subversion around us, in schools, in hospitals, in endless media propaganda. But there's only one key institution through which this great country has been ruined and subverted, which is seldomly exposed. Family courts. Right here in the quintessential American city, New York, Judge Jeanette McFarland and Staten Island Family Court have been isolating my daughter and my son from me, their father, for 17 months, 515 days, since our last, our last weekend together. All this based on a typical false, false allegation by a vindictive former spouse. I was never convicted of any crime. I was never even interrogated. But in this godless system, not only there's no presumption of innocence, but the father is not allowed to even prove his innocence. There's no jury trial. I was not even given a copy of the allegations. There was not even a hearing. Even after I proved my innocence, Judge Janet McFarland, acting together with another state paid actor, Rita Kaufman, an attorney ostensibly supposed to represent my children, still doesn't let me be a father. I am recording this video because the family court is completely and deliberately lawless, and I have no choice but to turn to the court of public opinion. My children miss me, I miss them. This is ongoing deliberate torture by government, paid actors, judges, attorneys, and clerks happening right here in New York, aimed to break parents and children. Every tyranny targets children. It makes it easier to rule. My name is Roman Brick. I used to define myself as an attorney, an MBA, a manager for big corporations. Yet, I am first, first and foremost the father of two beautiful children, a daughter who just turned 11, and my eight-year-old son. I am a victim of parental alienation, which is a form of child abuse aided and abetted by sophisticated and insidious government oppression perpetrated through family courts. I was born in Soviet Union, another godless tyranny, and although I can see communist despotism and deceptive propaganda where I face it, for too many years I was oblivious to the spiritual reality of our lives. This is a spiritual war. This is a spiritual conflict. But with God's grace and the unbelievable suffering of being ruthlessly erased from the lives of my alive children, I was brought back to my roots. I took the Jewish name of Avram, because Avram's life is a story of struggling for fatherhood in a world full of idol worshipping and child sacrifice. Quick background. I was forced to file for divorce, but I never divorced my children. I moved for my children across the continent from Seattle to New York. There is a judicial finding that the children are equally attached to me, yet, like millions of other fathers, I am being actively erased. This wasn't always like that. Even after I filed for separation, the children and I traveled, hiked, spent precious time together. There was a mediation in which the ex, of course, retracted her false allegations and agreed to virtually 50-50 custody. However, it was another trick. After a short time, she asked the court to move with the children from Seattle to New York. She declared to the court that the move is necessary because her spousal support will run out. And because she's a licensed registered nurse who speaks Russian and Hebrew, she will be able to find a job in New York. She also declared that once I move, we will return to the previous parenting plan. Another judge in Seattle, ever happy to play along with the obvious deceit and abuse, allowed her to take her children across the continent. I was allowed to see them once a month. Of course, the thousands of dollars I had to pay every month to my ex, who is a registered nurse, licensed in two states, was based on my job in Seattle. My ball and chain remained there. I had to fly across the country to spend the weekend with my own children. Imagine flying for six hours rushing in rain and snow, renting hotels, cars, just to see your children for a couple of days in a foreign hotel after they had a home, room, rooms, friends in Seattle. Moving from state to state is another common tactic to shake off the father and the courts enable it. In the meantime, my former spouse attempted to register the superseded plan in order to entrap me, knowing that I could not pick up the children from the school every Thursday while still residing in Seattle. This is an outright perjury. I submitted a formal complaint to the DA office. I got sympathy, but no resolution. Crimes are ignored. Black on white perjury swept under the rug. Psychological child abuse is not only allowed to continue, but actively endorsed and abetted by attorneys and judges like McFarland. With God's grace, I was able to find a comparable job, a great home for the kids, but exactly as I predicted, the ex decided to keep the children away from me with no reason, even though I live 10 minutes away from their school. After waiting for months for a court decision, I managed to spend 10 weekends with the kids. They were happy. We rode bikes together. We found a good hiking spot in New York as well. And then, of course, my ex made another fraudulent complaint to Child Protective Services. To this day, I never got a hearing in family court. All evidence, all previous lies, all perjury, 
all clear motive of alienation, everything was ignored. I was allowed to spend less than a third of a percent of time with my kids, one hour every two weeks, under a constant watch of hostile social workers in a prison-like environment, with metal doors, worn-out carpet, loud buzzers. All this, of course, is deliberately symbolic, cleverly created by the same child and family-hating government ideologues with plausible deniability in order to frustrate the children and make them see their father as some kind of dangerous criminal. Every gesture is twisted, taken out of context, and reported, but I'm not allowed to record. Moreover, I'm not even allowed to have copies of the reports. The organization doing it is, is typically cynically called Comprehensive Family Services. The information on how many millions CFS is getting from the courts with the help of judges like McFarland is kept from the public. And I suspect we have another kids for cash scheme. Imagine what it does to the parental figure to see their father like that, completely powerless, humiliated, controlled by government bureaucrats. This is not random. All is carefully designed. Kids like this end up on the streets and in jail, or at best, government dependent, poor and broken, exactly where the predatory government wants them. After spending tens of thousands of dollars on attorneys, I'm forced to represent myself. I filed tens of motions to the family court. I went six times to the appellate court in New York, three times to the highest court in New York, the Court of Appeals, and before that, to the highest court in Washington state. I went three times to a federal court. I filed complaints with New York State Assembly, the Committee on Judicial Conduct, the Grievance Committee, the Attorney for His Children Panel, the NYC Mayor's Advisory Committee on the Judiciary, and also the Chief Judge for New York State, Janet DeFiore. The facts, the law, the logic, the science of silent psychology, not to mention morals, all are being ignored. The children never wanted any separation from me. They told this repeatedly to the social workers, but they are being ignored. My son repeatedly said that he wants to live with me. Both kids reported that the mother is verbally violent and yells a lot, but nobody listens to them. The mother terminated our child, our child school's counselor because he was exposing the alienation. Grown men are forced to quit the fight with a government monster just to survive. What can a poor child do if they see that they are ignored month after month after month after month? No child and no parent should go through this torture. This is child abuse. The separation of fathers and children doesn't happen at the southern border where it gets attention, but right here in New York, New York. The bogus case was closed by child services, unfounded and sealed by New York State judge. Yet, Judge Janet McFarland, devoted feminist who has no children of her own, continues to torture my children and me, ignore facts and motions, drag decisions for weeks, openly and laughingly, ignoring law and constitution. She took an oath to uphold. What's the claim? All, all the years with the children, all the road trips, my volunteering in school, teacher testimonies, all the memories, all the, all the endless fights and motions, and suddenly I became a bad father to my own children after following them across the continent? This is ridiculous. I've been forced to fight for almost five years just for my children to have a father. Is this normal? Is this normal? But I understand that I'm not fighting with my ex. I am forced to fight a corrupt, godless, fatherlessness manufacturing machine and individual tyrants inside it who appear to enjoy the torture. These tyrants, they have names and it's my duty as a God-fearing Jew to expose them, not to fear them and not to bow to tyranny. History proves that those who don't bow are on the winning side, like Mordecai from the Book of Esther. I have exposed McFarland's illegal political payments to her comrades in the Democratic Party, including ex-Mayor de Blasio, who later appointed her in full-blown violation of NYCRR, for which other judges were removed. Yet, despite the clear hatred and bias, she refused to recuse herself from the case and continues to torment my children to enable the alienation and brainwashing to settle in. McFarlane continues to retaliate against me, recently threatening me that she will interrogate my children in chambers in a full-blown Spanish Inquisition style, without me or the expert on child psychology being present, without video recording of the interrogation, in a secret proceeding, the transcript of which I will never be allowed to see. Many heard that family courts are biased, many heard that they are corrupt. What needs to be realized is the details, the sheer extent and depth of the carefully designed rot. Contrary to what many say, the system is not broken. It works perfectly as designed, to break the children, break the parents, remove the fathers in the majority of cases, Sometimes it's the mothers for plausible deniability, but predominantly it's the fathers. And then the state can do whatever it wants with the children. Here on Staten Island, 
we have a childless feminist who keeps sending money to members of her party and an open homosexual as judges. They can do whatever they want at home, but why these people are making decisions about their children? McFarland told me that giving presents at the beginning of the Gestapo-like meeting or to hide small bills around the room to make the visit somewhat more enjoyable and fun for kids is not appropriate. How does she know what's appropriate? How do we continue tolerating this? McFarland was caught violating the law. Go type her name in elections.ny and gov website. What moral authority she has to judge others? These are the same people who bring drunk queen, drug queens into kindergartens, push for genital mutilation and hormone therapy, hormone blockers for, for teenagers. This is an all-out war on fathers and children because fatherless society is easier to subjugate. I, I grew up reading Solzhenitsyn, Varlam Shalamov. This is a book I read recently, and the author also describes how the communists came first for the fathers. Why are we allowing people who revolt against God's commandment to be fruitful and multiply, ruin lives of our children? Is it because they can only multiply through our children? I worked as an attorney in Israel for many years, so I understand exactly what's going on, but I'm not an attorney in New York. So, unlike these attorneys who let the court system deteriorate to its current despicable state, I cannot be disbarred and subjugated. I am helping other parents. I am leading many novel and creative legal efforts. I exhausted all my savings, all while the other party receives hundreds of thousands of dollars in child support for children I don't see. Endless welfare handouts and free attorneys funded by the state to litigate me to the ground. I'm asking for your help. Everything you touch in the system is fully rotten and subverted. It festered for decades. The appeal process is designed to discourage. They cut and paste the same paragraph in completely different cases. Appellate division can decide cases in the quorum of four. It shows they never disagree. Attorneys for the children are claiming attorney-client privilege and at the same time testify as if they were witnesses. My children are not given a voice. They are silenced. My son said he wants to live with me, but Kaufman lies and denies it. The system is designed for grown men to give up and walk away. How soon a small child will get frustrated and align himself with the lies? Just as a survival instinct. Just as a survival instinct. Panel supposed to oversee attorneys for the children refuses to release information on who is actually certified to represent children and what education and parental alienation they have. The grievance committee supposed to discipline attorneys ignored blatant lies and deliberate misrepresentation of law by Rita Kaufman, who, together with the state attorney representing my ex, Ian Berliner, were formally admonished by another judge, but the public will never know it. McFarland was not elected. She was pre-selected by the mayor in a hidden process with minimal time for the public to react. And this is supposed to be legal? And this is supposed to be normal? Assignment of attorneys by the court are supposed to be public knowledge to prevent nepotism and favoritism, so the taxpayers could know which attorneys get the majority of cases. But they are not. Chief New York State Judge Di Fiori ignored multiple letters showing McFarland's corruption and illegal payments, and cynically wrote to me to submit a complaint to a commission, which is formally not a part of the judicial branch, but it is full of judges in a full-blown conflict of interest who control the outcome. Of course, all of it is smoke and mirrors for the public, Plausible deniability is the name of the game. All overseeing mechanisms have been equally subverted, and we truly have an unelected ruling class preying on the children. All the circus is funded with Title 4D of the Social Security Act, money, which creates a perversive incentive scheme to always have one custodial and one targeted alienated parent. It is bribing the states with federal money, incentivizing the judges to never allow 50-50 custody and to maximize matching child support payments. It covers the real intents of destroying lives with the plausible deniability of incentivizing collection of child support. All over the US, this money is used to fund the sheriffs, the courts, the support magistrates, the very mechanism that ruins the families. The very mechanism that ruins the parents and the children. One key topic that I have to mention, the courts routinely deny the right to a jury trial, although the right is guaranteed by both US and New York constitutions. We saw what difference jury trial makes, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. But this is only reserved to celebrity millionaires. I believe that I am the first father in New York State who brought the question of jury trial in family courts to the appellate federal court in Second Circuit. I am following the biblical story of Avraham and Avimelech. Those helping others will be helped as well. All these and many more are projects that I've been working on with other alienated parents and victims of this horrible, 
godless covert ideological takeover through family courts. This is full-blown government tyranny and social engineering through completely emptied out institution of family courts. Only the husk remains. I am commanded by God and my faith to stand up to it. And I'm asking for your support and your help. My children and I are helpless hostages, de facto abducted by unelected, ruthless, petty tyrants like McFarland, who shove their child and family hating ideology down Americans' throats. Judge McFarland wants to re-traumatize my children through a hidden interrogation in her chambers, playing along with the child-breaking agenda, even after full vindication by the universally hated child protection services and another judge. Only her and the equally corrupt lawyer Kaufman will be present. I will never know what was actually said. Asking the children who they want to live with is judicial child abuse. There were judges who actually said that. My expert witness wrote that this is extremely damaging to the child. It puts them in a loyalty conflict. It has no evidentiary value. The children were isolated and brainwashed and coached by the alienator and the attorney Rita Kaufman for 17 months. A child cannot dictate when to go to sleep or whether they want to wake up for school, how much ice cream to eat. Yet in this perverted system, they are adultified whenever government finds convenient. Children need fathers. Kids need fathers. But the same pervert government that is sexualizing children from an early age and pushes ungodly agenda through kindergartens is allowing the children to change their sex or select their parent through family courts. I'm asking for your help and support. I'm opening a donation page. Please feel free to reach out to me via email, saveabrahamschildren at gmail.com.